Judith Almeida. A very, very popular name. A very popular name. Uh, because of your activism in the Kolwa area, tell us how you got started the spread of your activism. Actually, I uh, I was a, I was in Mumbai for a while. I was abroad for a while, and I returned to Goa because Goa was my, the land I always believed I belonged to. And I, uh, as a growing child, also I would always tell my parents that I, this is the place where I belong. This is my, I am a daughter of this soil. I don't want to go anywhere else. I had lots of opportunities to go abroad and work and take up opportunities, but I refused all because my heart always was connected to the soil of Goa. And uh, you can say I I love Goa more than anything else in this world. You can take anything away from me, but you cannot take Goa from me. And that is why in 1998, when I first saw, I was living in Ake and I saw the the first trees, huge trees being cut down. For buildings? That, for buildings? For buildings. That is when my fight started. I filed complaints. I went to uh, Mr. Digambar Kamat was the minister, power minister. He was our MLA. I went to him and told him what is happening is wrong. We cannot destroy the environment. Because I come from a profession where we fought to save life. And you, I realized I was, a, I was in the nursing field. And I realized that if you want to save life, then you must have a healthy environment. And if you cut down trees, you are going to first lose oxygen and a variety of other biodiversity things that are connected to life. And the cycle of life will be disrupted if we destroy all this. And that was my awareness in 98. I started reading about it. And then I started filing complaints. I took up passions. Then I, I, shift, I shifted down to uh, Kolva. From Ake, from I purchased Ake. a pro yeah, I purchased a property there and I built my house and I and I settled down in Kolwa. Kolwa is a place where my grandmother as a child, I'm now almost 67. So as a child she would catch my hand and make me climb up the sand dunes and go through the creek where she used to give me her own uh, piece of her sari to you know catch fish. So my memories of Kolwa and Goa are then. And when I saw 50s, the 50s, in the 60s. 50s. 50s. So when I saw, when I began to see the destruction of Kolwa taking place, my heart wept. That was for a me, turning point, no? 90s yes, was a turning point. Complete turning point for me. It was like that is where you know we had this immigration. You had the uh, real estate boom, real estate railway, boom, railway, everything. And the railways came, and then you began to have a lot of immigration and. Our culture was also being, now being compromised. I began to see that, you know, what we really do on the ground was not what was happening in the marketplaces. If you traveled in the buses, we had a freedom to travel. But I, I, every, every time I would see that there was, people would come and molest you in the buses. And I said, this is not our culture. We were not like this. We had the freedom. But what is happening to our freedom today? It is being compromised. Then my children were growing. My daughter would come home and say, I was molested or they, somebody stole this from my pocket and these things were we, was new to us and I said nothing doing it is time now I have I have got what I had needed to get from Goa I need to give back to Goa from then to now how many movements Judith Almeida is a very common name if we hear of Kolwa we hear of Judith Almeida I am meeting you for the first time today but I, I've heard your name hundred times. See, I, 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 I don't like to talk too much about me, but I like to talk about issues, the, issues. the issues. Tell. For me, the environment was at the top level. I got, I came to know Roland Martins first. Then I met through him, I, a lot of awareness. I attended a lot of his meetings. Then I met Claude Alvarez. I met uh, advocate Nigel Costa Freyes. These are the people who their spirit and their sense of activism to protect and preserve Goa selflessly gave me the, you know, the strength in my will to fight back. Because if you don't have legal backing in Goa, it is it's, very it's hell, difficult. It's, hell, it's, hell, yeah, it's, it's very difficult. They make life tough for you. Yes. Very tough. So my f the first person I approached was Advocate Nigel Costa Fierce. That man showed me he made, he was so selfless over trees over trees over 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 environment issues i, see. I started filing complaints initially then i to, i I've decided that we need to go to courts because the government was not listening to us yeah. uh, all the authorities were not 
listen to us. So there was only one way was to go to the courts because we, our hope was that the court would help us, yeah. you know, bring about a change. And it is their orders, hopefully, that the government would bring a change. But today we see even the government does not even follow the orders of the courts. So you have to file contempt petitions, you have to file. So it started there. And, uh, you know, we had a lot of difficulty because when you need, you need a legal counsel, you need money. And I am not much of a money person. I don't even understand uh, this money and finance. Uh, even though I belong to a small organization Col called the Col Colva Civic and Consumer Forum, uh, the treasury is, is looked after by our, one of our members and I don't get involved at all. Even if somebody has, uh, one or two people till today have, have donated and helped yeah. our cause, but that is not enough. We needed more. I had even put in, put out appeals, but not a single person approached. So this fight is a is a fight that needs to be supported by the local people. And what not are the most important issues that you feel? Most see, I live along the coast yeah. presently. So today the coast is uh, is uh, really at uh, you know it's being destroyed completely. If we say tourism, we were looking for sustainable tourism. But what we have today is unsustainable. It is corporate uh, ridden, uh, you know, driven, and the corporates don't, they don't care a damn about your environment. All they think about is how to make money. I say this because corporates against whom I have filed complaints have come to me to my face and said, you can do what you want. I see. We have the money and we have the connections. I see. You will never succeed. I see. But they, what they underestimate in, in me as an activist is that I call, call myself a public spirited citizen. In me is that I will never give up. What I start, I make sure I take it to its logical end. And God has always been there to protect me, support me. He has sent me angels whenever I needed them and help. Like for example, about three matters that were... Uh, three, which three? Three. Which three? three? Relating to? Silver Sand. There is another matter which is gone going on it's, uh, against two other corporates. That is in the Supreme coast right, coast, coast coastal, coastal construction. illegal constructions. See, in 2011, uh, the, there was a Suomoto writ petition which the Honorable High Court had started uh, in, uh, in, in, in Goa. Uh, when the coast was being destroyed, the Herald had carried uh, this in their news item and the uh, uh, Honorable High Court took so much to notice of this article and decided that they wanted to find out whether the co entire coast could be, uh, could be, you know, saved. So the, the hearing started. Madam uh, Norma Alvarez was the amicus curiae in that matter. And uh, I saw that our panchayat, which is the Kolva panchayat, had filed uh, affidavits to the High Court yeah. stating that they were that they were dealing with the uh, with the illegal structures when yeah. in actual fact they were not. They said they had demolished, but I saw that what they said they demolished was still standing. So our forum intervened. We filed an application before the Honorable High Court, yeah. and the Honorable High Court accepted us as an intervener respondent number 30 in that petition. And that's when we started taking up all the CRZ matters. Presently, we have filed another PIL called 10 of 2020 in the Honorable High Court, where we have asked for the mapping of the entire Kolva Senapati stretch. And from what I hear, the mapping, there are hundreds of more illegal structures come up since 2006. Because in 2006, under the aegis of the Honorable High Court, the mapping was done of this area and all the structures that were illegal were identified. Those matters are still going on because the G Goa Coastal Zone Management Authority, which is supposed to be the nod nodal agency to look after the coast, after the CRZ, is actually protecting the violators. And I can say this with hand conviction, in glove. hand, hand in, in, in glove, glove, completely. I can say this with conviction. I'll give you the first example, Hotel Silver Sats, 2019. 18th of January, the Honorable Supreme Court in a dismissed the civil application. And once a civil application is dismissed, the matter ends. Nobody can have, you can maybe review it within one month, but more than that, you can do nothing about it. 
nobody, no lower authority, not even the High Court has the power to intervene in a civil application. But after the civil application was dismissed on 18th of January, in July of 2019, the same Goa Coastal Zone Management Authority decided to review an application of Silver Sands when they had no power. Now, I could have challenged this straight away, but we didn't have the finances. So I said, let me fight the long battle. You have become a lawyer in the meanwhile, half a lawyer. But, <laughs> yes. but, but what I want to say is that I understand the pain and the heartbreak and only someone from the area would, would, would notice the changes that are go through on the coastal area yes. on such a, such a rapid pace. Apart from that, any other issues which are uh, which which are also several like, C like. several CRZ lo no, uh, violations all along our beaches. There I have filed. They are all before the Goa Coastal Zone Management. Some are before the NGT. Some are in the Supreme Court, in the High Court. Wow. I'm fighting in all these areas, and all these matters are on my table. Mostly commercial interest, or are they local players or local? There are local houses, players also. No, small no, persons, no. We, small people. No, houses we don't interfere okay. because those are at traditional people and they have been given protection by the 2011 notification. I have no business to With go there. 2011 CRZ notification. I have no business to go there. No, I understand. Why I was asking is because the small guy has such a difficulty to set up a house and a big guy who pays the money can get through without the any... The big guy can ride roughshod every rule and regulation and the authorities will shut their eyes and grant permission. Now I'll give you one example. I'm presently fighting the shacks that are being given in the no development zone. In a particular place in Sernabati, the, the GCZMA granted a party from outside the state structures on the sand dunes. I see. Now there are several sand dunes in Sernabati and Kolwa. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. And I remember the ex-member secretary who was an IS officer when he visited Sernabati. He stood on the top of the one of the sand dunes. He climbed it and he said, Ye to jannate. Jannat means heaven. Heaven. He said, no, 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 madam, we cannot allow this destruction. And he supported us. Nilesh Cabral became the power minister. The moment the orders were being passed by this member secretary, he called him, he insulted him and got rid of him from the... GCZ. This is the role of some of our people's representatives supposing to be taken care they of the local interest. Are, uh, but, 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 madam, you know what? I also noticed that uh, sometimes it's very difficult for us to understand issues even 50 kilometers away. The sand dunes, for example, is very much of a sunset thing. Right from the 1970s, uh, there was noise about the decision to take away sand from the sand dunes to build to silica factories and all these rubbish glass factories and you know we of course were not so much touched by it later on the issue came to Badez and all but in Salset it's a big issue but many 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 of these corporates are using beach sand to construct their structures beach which we say is salty so they cannot but they are using it what they care because after after a few years they have made their money yeah. they will reconstruct without any permissions because they have all the authorities in their pockets and they don't give a damn because for them they are making crores of rupees if you had to name the top five environmental issues of salset today what would they be first is the sea, coastal coastal uh, destruction that is taking place then there is a severe pollution because we have filed a pil uh, 15 of 2011 in the honorable high court where today the honorable high court uh, through the authorities is setting is has uh, the stp is being set up in kolwa that is a major issue why because switch, switch, switch switch. because during the course of this pil we got studies done of the groundwater and we found that the groundwater was completely polluted now if the groundwater is polluted imagine you going there is no water in your tap you will go to your well yeah all the wells were polluted. I see. There was a study done by an MSc student of Kolwa and she found all the wells in the vicinity were also polluted. As well as the Pollution Control Board, the WRD did their tests and they found also the water in the ground, the groundwater polluted. The creek in Kolwa is completely destroyed because where the, the bridges, the creek. Yes, the tourism department had in the 80s had set up stalls.
sand dunes which are being destroyed yeah. bore wells yeah. in the crz you cannot have bore wells especially in the no development zone and the crz1 crz1 is where the sand dunes are you have people coming from outside the state yeah. getting permissions illegally from the wrd without any permission from the gczma water, water resources De department without permissions from, from the, the goa Gwa coastal zone management authority <laughs> and they are setting up uh, these uh, installing these bore wells and using it for commercial purpose we might not have water tomorrow for us to drink we will go to our wells and find no water because most of the wells are also drying up why they are drying up because the ground water is being tapped and there is no control nobody knows how much ground water is being imagine one one hotel one sorry this pro project proponent on in sernapati when an inspection was done on 4th of on 2nd of january uh, february 2021 told the inspecting team that they are drawing up more than 5000 liters of water per day from the ground i see So imagine if they are for commercial purpose, if they are using that water from the ground, five thousand. Do you think the people in the village are going to have water to drink tomorrow in the their problem wells? The problem with Salset is that it's far away from Panjim, so people are not even aware of what are the issues at the ground. Most of the administrators and uh, bureaucrats. No, so, no, no, no. Apart from other things. Sorry, I, I differ. Yeah. I beg to differ. No, no. So they can cover it up. I'm not saying. I'm not saying they are not forum, aware. As a forum, as a forum, we have raised every issue connected to life. Life. means water life means air so the garbage issue is we have fought we have filed pils in the high court we are fighting that the matter is going on before the pollution control board before the honorable high court we, we are dealing with all these issues of pollution by air by water that means all our fields are being destroyed with garbage all the water bodies are filled with garbage how do you expect a farmer to use water that is so badly polluted to cultivate his fields and you will find that roads which are built through these fields everywhere there is garbage dumped so that garbage goes into the field into cultivated fields imagine the plight of the farmer having to go and collect his uh, his crop where there is so much of garbage dump so and it, mixed garbage so you have taken your nursing level to a public health and wider activism level yes. also it 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 connects with yes. uh, it connects because i was uh, i was in the in the psychiatric field for about 7 years where i was doing counseling and society I, also needs some psychiatric nurses because we seem to be having a collective mental breakdown as far as think, as far as i think we are more having a moral break only breakdown. only only we don't have uh, speedy speedy drugs which can be injected and you know kept and uh, kind of kept kept us under under some kind of stupor that we don't misbehave for we have till. lost our morality period true if we had our morality intact true. today we would not be in the state if we, we understood our long term self interest also that would be enough that is not happen We there is no long term interest yeah, there is no see i remember dysp telling me about 10 years ago judith what are you fighting he says the youth of today are not bothered about tomorrow they are just worried about now no but that's not true because even when we were young they told us no you all are you all are the freaks you know everyone else is into a career but we but we, but we were not we were morally very strong it was a small group who had that strong feelings i think even now it will be a small group all as they say a uh, reasonable man change to the ways of the world therefore all progress depends on unreasonable men i feel and a men. lot of our youth are not aware of the reality because i speak to college they students they also feel helplessness helplessness no they person. feel that you know it see like me a person with so much of this age i was fighting and people would tell me you can do what you want you'll not succeed and you know you have, you will have to give up but I, they have a new my spirit but i believe our youth have it in them true all that they know need to do is to dig deep inside of them and you use it see to in uh, 2019 when the youth on uh, 19th of december yeah. 19th was it or 2020 the youth came out yeah 
for when the when the mole issue and all was going yeah. on. What happened? The police, the government sent the police force yeah. Yeah. to arrest them, yeah. and that was what to demoralize the youth. But our youth must understand one thing: yeah. if our youth in in the 70s could get a 50 percent for the bus traveling today, I was there. In that. Today, I was there yeah. You were there. So think if then if they could do it, why can't they do it now? Today our youth are more empowered because yeah. they are on Instagram, Correct. on Facebook, the on word travels, all the, word the media, travels, yes. which I am not yes. very good at, but they are. And I admire them for that. Yes. And I believe all that our youth need to know is if they dig deep, there is nothing they cannot do. Society also should support them. What I'm saying, if you if you are not willing to stick your neck out and go into jail for a day, at least morally give support, give lend a support to a good cause. If you cannot do it financially, do it morally. The problem with our people of Goa, those who are in their homes are leading comfortable lives because their husbands are either in the Gulf or abroad and sending them money. They are not bothered what goes on outside. They are extravagantly spending their hard-earned money. They don't realize yeah. one day their husbands will come back and may not have any money and to live a comfortable life. we will be living life. in an unsustainable world. Yes, unsustainable we are already in an unsustainable world. You see the climate change? Why is that? It's because all over the world the nobody cares about monsoons the environment. The have been so devastating. devastating. I shudder cyclone, to think what will happen this year. We had, we had a cyclone. You know the entire Sennabati Kolwa in 2021, the entire dunes were eroded. Really? I have complete video shot and photographs of all that. And I, I have produced it during this coastal zone management plan. I produced all that to the authorities to tell them how important it is for us to remove all the sea walls. In 2021, I talked about the sea walls, and now in 2022, the Honorable NGT has said no sea walls should be along the coast. And today, if you go all over, Sennabati, Kolwa has all sea walls. Sea walls are not a solution, actually. They are not because they destroy all the adjoining areas. I see. see the sea is water. Water has to find its place and it will find its place no matter what you human beings do. Get it clear into your head, you cannot fight the sea. So let us be sustainable and let us find scientific ways to protect our beaches. Last question, without without uh, casting aspersions on the court and without getting caught up for, for contempt of court, are the courts a solution for environmental issues? Can we depend on them? How much? See, uh, in 2010 to uh, say 2016, the Honorable National Green Tribunal was doing a fantastic job. I remember being interviewed by a reporter from out of the country I see. and uh, and she asked me you come here I've seen you coming often to the National Green Tribunal in Pune uh, and I see you standing in court what is your opinion and I said to her this court is our savior I see. period I said because it is a very beautiful uh, uh, you know tribunal that really looks into issues I am not a lawyer I would stand in the court and argue our matters why I see. Because I had to just produce facts of the case. And being a person on the ground, I knew the facts firsthand. If I told a lawyer, lawyer would understand it from what I told him or whatever documents I produced. But I saw it with my eyes and I could see the destruction taking place. So I could stand in the NGT and tell the judge, so and so are the facts, so and so thing is happening. And that's how nearly seven matters we got orders in our favor. Me, an ordinary citizen, standing up. I would see a 70-year-old man coming all the way from, from uh, South Goa. He would come and stand up in the court because he was fighting to protect that area from for the sake of the turtles. So he got a good order. But today, you know, in the in the NGT, we have we have to more talk more about the law than we have to talk about the facts of the environment. If you talk about the facts of the environment, it is not it is not looked at so seriously because there's a lot of technicality that is being raised. Now, a common man will not be able to te technically speak about the law, etc. So we are dependent on lawyers. Now, if we cannot afford a lawyer. We simply have to give up. And, and and a lot of people don't want to contribute to such a cause. 
there is no doubt that there are people who abuse the donations that are being given but not everybody at least you see yeah. the you see the body of work of an organization and support that organization because your money will be going for the protection of the environment for your future generations it's i am not fighting for my future my children or children only i'm fighting Correct. for all our children the It bombay goans have played a big role in keeping goa goa positively and sometimes negatively but yes, tell us about your families your family your dad was a was a footballer my dad was a footballer a gold medalist and i think uh, which club which club uh, lusitanians lusitanians or? lusitanians yeah he was 50 there. 60s yeah uh, 40s no no 50s i was born in 50s no so 40s 50s 50s there he came he name he name went name joseph baptista and uh, he played football and uh, he was a gold medalist i think that's where he met my mom on gold the medalist in in college in football in yeah he no he was working then yeah. he he okay. finished his education at loyola it was not loyola it was by some other name before margao margao i know the old name portuguese yeah, portuguese, portuguese name. Name. anglo anglo yeah. something he studied there because my father was born in eden and then I he see. came back my fa- i come my my uh, my gr- grandfather was a top cop in his times so he was posted like there like it was and and dhirubhai ambani <laughs> yeah even they all eden connections no eden connections yeah. it was is born eden born okay and uh, so is dhirubhai ambani and he worked okay. there dhirubhai okay. worked there as a petrol okay. pump attendant as the story okay. goes but my f- grandfather was a cop so he he he, had, he was even given i know the golden hills sword wow. as a as a whatever Vitam award in those time he was a, a very daring police officer and i thank god because i have his blood running in me today i fear no one i only fear god because i know he is my only protector and i do what i do and i know and, and i i give credit to my children and my daughter once told me your generation destroyed goa the environment that of goa true. now that you have to restore it that is true so i said to her i will do my best actually we got our generation got it in fairly good state yes. but but we we sat by and saw it getting destroyed yes. we may have not destroyed it personally but we saw it yes, being destroyed yes we saw it and we remain silent yes. a lot of yes. us yes. our silence is the worst killer you know being silent means you are a part of that yeah. destruction yeah it's so worse than supporting up, it yes. it's worse than supporting it because you can pretend that you're not part Correct. of it so important no judith because at the end of the day this social pressure can get you yes and rightly or wrongly it may even be totally wrong but it convinces you that maybe i'm wrong you know gas lighting gas lighting of sorts anyway thanks so much i have never been con- i have never been Convinced. you know psych, uh, psych. Uh, subdued by anybody till date i thank god i thank my grandfather my father for who i am and 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 psychiatric and, nursing and my two children thank i you. give full credit to them thank you thank you so much yeah. judith all the very best too long really no it's not too long not at all but all the very best in all that you do it's so important